Okay, at this time I would like to uh, call to order the Hardin County Board of Education meeting and uh, if you will join us in saying the pledge to the flag. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you all for coming out. We've got some principals and maybe new principals and just a whole friendly group out there ready to start the school here shortly. Yes. Board commitments. You want to take care of those? I can do it. To improve our effectiveness, the Hardin County Board of Education commits to keep children first, listen, be prepared, be professional, demonstrate financial stewardship, represent the entire district, and support district goals and support board decisions. All right, thank you. And uh, Recognitions, Mr. John Wright, you gonna take care of that? Yes, sir. Uh, we do not have the Stronger Together, ACS Stronger <coughs> Together, uh, because you know, we're gonna take the, the summer month of July off. However, we did have some students that did really well, that, and we'll bring back some more uh, in August that did really well in competitions over the summer. So we wanted to bring these students in July. And I think you'll see why, we're, why they deserve that recognition here in just a second. Okay. I'll go ahead and pass that resolution. We need a motion to pass the resolution. I move that we pass that resolution. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's Maddox Adams here. Maddox is here. Come on up here, Maddox. <laughs> Ms. Palmer's going to get you something, buddy. So this is Maddox Adams. He is a rising sixth grader. Uh, at uh, East Harden Middle School, and he earned fifth place in mathematics at the 2019 National Beta Convention uh, when he represented Lincoln Trail Elementary School. Fifth place is a big deal at a national competition, yes, and so uh, congratulations to Maddox. Great job, buddy. Thank you. And Mr. Wright, if we yes. can have his parents to oh, stand yeah. up because uh, they went on Maddie's that trip parents. as well. Yeah, parents, please stand up so we can recognize you and thank you. <laughs> All right, this is Lena Brown. She is also a rising sixth grader at East Harden. She earned a national championship in mixed media arts at the 2019 wow. National uh, Beta Convention. She also represented uh, Lincoln Trail Elementary School. Congratulations. <laughs> Terry Brooks, Terry, are you here? Come on up, Terry. Terry is a rising freshman at Central Hardin High School. He earned a state championship in the 400 meter dash at the Kentucky Middle School track and field meet while he was an eighth grader representing East Hardin. He finished with a time of 53.65 seconds. Congratulations. Right. Terry's parents are here. Would you all stand and be recognized, please? Thank you all. And Gabe Russell. Gabe, come on up, bud. This is Gabe Russell. He is a rising freshman at North Arden High School. He earned a state championship in the 3,200 meter run at the Kentucky Middle School. Don't run off too fast. Uh, the Kentucky Middle School track and field meet uh, while he was an eighth grader at James T. Alton Middle School. His time of 10 minutes, 33.88 seconds was a personal record. Okay. <laughs> Mama is here, and also the athletic director at uh, James T. Alton, Richard Rowland is here. So <laughs> All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Great job. Okay, we have anything on focus on academics tonight? Oh, yes, yes, sir. I'm introducing that. I'm Greg Sutton. Uh, and I'm going to introduce <laughs> Mrs. Jennifer Lewis and Ms. Lisa Sturman. I don't know if Ms. Sturman's going to be a part of this. They are presenting the turnaround plan at, at uh, Radcliffe Elementary School. So, Mrs. Lewis was named interim principal at Radcliffe 
uh, earlier this month. And looking forward to the great job she and Ms. Sturman are going are gonna to do at Rackford. Thanks, sir. Okay, the last time I addressed the board, I did not need reading lessons. <laughs> <laughs> so, I hope you all have the page that I had uh, sent earlier. And um, I'd like to say that to turn this school around, we're very excited about it. And the very first thing that we have done is we have hired and kept a stellar staff. Uh, so, starting with that, really from the top, top down, Ms. Uh, Sturman here has so many great qualities that she is bringing in so much into our building that it is just phenomenal. She's been a special ed facilitator, uh, K through eight. She has taught K through eight. Uh, she's been a curriculum and instruction uh, chair at her school along with gifted and talented, uh, as well as the behavior and academic interventionist. So brings a lot of good qualities and a lot of great experience in, which was definitely needed uh, in that building and just the the entire staff and you can you know I would invite you all to come in at any time because you can already see uh, a lot of energy and change pumping through that building and it is very exciting to watch it gets me energized you may or may not see that with me <laughs> throughout the time <laughs> so we're just kind of going to run down through this list and if you have questions uh, if you don't understand something I'd be happy to stop uh, one of this will be able to take you through that uh, we put this together, uh, KDE, Pam Bell, and myself. This is kind of what we came up with for a 30, 60, 90 uh, turnaround plan that we're going to be able to monitor, and then we'll extend it out 120 and, and, and so on. So the first thing we did was uh, back in March, April, I sat with the two ladies that were assigned from the Kentucky Department of Education, and we wrote the grant uh, that turnaround schools or CSI uh, can apply for and we were fully funded at the $250,000 mark which was fabulous news <laughs> you know for Radcliffe Elementary because what that means for us is we were able to get a new reading series because their reading series I think was still the 2007 year you know back when the state gave you textbook money and so that's quite <laughs> dated uh, and so we have been able to purchase an entirely new reading series that we are very excited about. Um, and I'm just going to take you down through that. That is called Journeys, uh, and that is the literacy common core curriculum that we're going to be using in grades one through five. One of the first things we did too is we made a big switch to the master schedule with Journeys. That's going to be a 100 minute walk. And that starts at 7.30 in the morning and the entire school is reading. Every assistant, Every special area teacher are there assigned in 50 minute blocks to other uh, uh, classrooms so that those students are going to be getting a lot more one on one broken down attention. And so they will go from the large group breaking it down into the small group. And also in that grant, we purchased the I Ready uh, reading, reading curriculum, and that will be a mandatory 20 minute rotation center through. Now, some of those are a little bit more difficult than what some of these little guys are used to. So there is a possibility that that 20 minutes, instead of running through a small group, we may have to back up and actually do that whole group teacher-led model for the first little bit and, and you know, and kind of chunk that out, chunk that out in increments. But that is perfectly fine because we have a starting point of where we're going to move forward with. So we have a three days journeys curriculum training and inside of that grant we're going because we have so many training days that we are going to implement beginning uh, July 24th really until the students enter that building I guess on the 8th. Uh, and so we are able to pay uh, supplements to the salaries out of that so that we can have everyone in and go above the training days and everyone is very on board with that. Not only do we have them coming in and have them on, back in the summer in case new staff come on board, but we're going to have on-site on coaching. So they're going to come in, they'll be able to work with individual teams and individual teachers, uh, and they're going to be able to watch, you know, kind of the transitions, how you do this, how we do that, how do we go from, you know, uh, depending on whatever, you know, the technology part aspect is, and breaking that down so they'll be able to get pointers right at that time 
which I don't think they've had. Most schools aren't fortunate enough to have that with the on-site coaching part uh, where the real experts come in and train with. So, you know, we're very, very excited about that. So if you skip down to number five, we're also, and Joyce Jackson and I have been working together with them some on this throughout, uh, I guess we really started that in April was the first time that we did the Castle Protocol there. And I know you may not, you're like Castle, you know, this TV show, it's a different <laughs> one. Castle Protocol, yeah, it's, it's very simple, but it's very powerful. And so they only really got to go through it for one time. And with basically a new staff, we're going to back up. We're going to do the review. We had Ms. Jackson coming in August, who is also going to review with them so that we can kind of layer and tier that. So every uh, team will now plan together. That was a very big issue before. They had common plan, I mean, but they did not plan together. And they're, those are two very different things. Um, and so with that, they, when they plan together, they will have their assessment that they are going to use. And those can be formative, those can be summative, but, and we will determine, I will determine for them really kind of what they're going to use starting off, and then we'll kind of loosen those reins a little bit. And so what's going to happen is they will take a medium, a high, and a low, and they will keep those same students throughout the year. What you bring that first time, unless that child moves, that's who we're going to bring. We will analyze the work. So if you have four second grade, you're going to have four teachers, and they will each have a medium, a high, and a low piece of work in front of them with the same assessment going across. Then they're going to analyze with set criteria based on what the assessment is. You, know, you can't really just jump in and say, but I would have to say critical vocabulary will always be something that we're going to analyze out of that. And what will happen then is they're going to figure out right then as we go through, hopefully Lisa and I will just be able to ask some guiding questions because you certainly want teacher leaders now to begin taking over, which is huge on our agenda of creating true teacher leaders. And um, so they're going to figure out why is this low, why is this medium, why is this high? And then we're going to dissect that and go in, okay, your small group, this is what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to go back and reteach you. You're going to pull those small kids from each class, pull them into one. Are, we, are, are there enough that you're going to actually have to do a small group reteach center? Just all kinds of things. But that is, that is very powerful, especially if you can save the same kids and watch the growth throughout the year, which is what we're hoping for. So also we are going to be focusing as a school on critical vocabulary because that is, that is uh, quite lacking at this point. Uh, questioning, compare and contrast, and reading for meaning. And we're picking those because those are all very intentional. And with Marzano, you know, what, I think 70% or something like that is what the uh, growth is supposed to be with comparative thinking. And we're not teaching these kids comparative thinking. And we have got to turn that around. So we're waiting kind of for the, we're going to use the pacing guides we have now. The district is actually going to work on updating those pacing guides. But uh, Ms. Sermon put the KASC -K checklist and we're having that printed off so that they will have all the standards uh, because we're using the new standards and so they're going to have to plug those into the old until the new comes out. Uh, and take it together and put it apart for them. And she worked on that today. <coughs> Fabulous. I cannot say enough about what she has done uh, working beside me. I know she gets frustrated with me because my mind goes 100 miles a minute. So, and on down through there, team planning with the uh, design structure, we created a, uh, a template with KDE. We had to tweak it for us. Uh, you know, it was a little busy. Uh, KDE's version and Ms. Sermon has that uploaded already uh, to go for our staff and they will have that on tw the 24th on the first day. All this they'll have on that very first day of planning so that, that uh, of training so they can start. And that's simply an forward. instructional planning tool so that it encourages them to continue to plan together but highlights everything we need to see hit. So it just outlines it for them. It's really good. She did a really good job on that. 
So then we go on down. Uh, we have an instructional leadership team. Those instructional leaders, we have one person from each team who they have stepped up. We call it the ILT team. Uh, you know, and they had that. Uh, there are different agendas and a lot of monitoring will come through the ILT time. We already have items set up on that that is reoccurring throughout the year for both KSI, the literacy continuum that uh, the district has, but it, uh, so many things that we already had monitored. Now, our thing now is we are also going to bring them in. We'll be doing walkthroughs with them so they can do that with their uh, team. But we're also going to be doing a lot of modeling with the compare and contrast uh, and comparative thinking and the reading for me. Then they will lead those PLCs from that. Now, those, again, we're baby steps. And we're going to have to do a lot of modeling to make sure that it is where it needs to be as we gradually uh, release that, that out. So, um, and Joyce Jackson and I will be doing that. Lisa will also be doing that. The phonics continuum, we just talked about that. Also in that grant, we got the science and social studies level readers uh, through journeys that will be coming in, that will be a part of their literacy stations. That is huge because we did not have that. Um, that there were some left from the 2007 time frame. And those were in a room which we have now taken out of that room and we have Lexile with KDE that we did all of April and May and those are dispersed into the rooms. There will be reading logs that will, it will be a mandatory 20 minute uh, reading log every day signed, uh, you know, at Radcliffe for first through fifth grade. Uh, and that will also be built into their PBIS system, which I think is going to be fabulous. Uh, Anyway, I'm probably telling you too much. We have a 90 minute math block, a 20 minute mandatory one of that will be an I ready math center. Those are already here in order. Uh, and we have unpacked those in the library, which it was hot in there when we did that. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it is what it is. Uh, sight word and fast facts, foundational skills. Those are all the things they're getting ready to start year two on. Truthfully, year one, they struggled a little bit trying to get that, so we may have to backpedal a little bit and kind of restart some of that and, and move forward, and that's okay, because I'm telling you that staff in the here, they are ready. I'm so happy with them. And then part of the turnaround plan, we have to do something to help our students with trauma and with the um, issues that those kids bring every day. And, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, you know everything is changing in our society and they need help. So Jenny Stucker, who is uh, a person uh, already in the district who has a lot of background with the behavior interventions, she will be with us two and a half days a week uh, and she will be running small group and she will really be focusing on trauma and anger management issues and what they can do for self-calming. We're gonna do a lot of contracts with the kids. We have so many awesome PBIS items listed throughout the year. I mean, we have things that are gonna go on that we want these kids to, you know, finally there's something that they really, really wanna do. I want them to enjoy school. Lisa wants them to enjoy school. We want our staff to enjoy school. And so really that is where we are right now. Anybody have a question? What's PBIS mean? That is the Positive Behavior Intervention <coughs> System. Okay. And really, we've renamed KSI to WIN. I mean, we're trying to do everything to turn everything toward a positive spin. When those kids come in, you know, they're going to be greeted. Whether, <laughs> whether they like it or not, we're going to be <laughs> smiling and happy. And uh, they'll be sleepy and grumpy, but it'll all be good in the end. So. And PBIS really, I mean, it doesn't mean a lot to people who aren't in there doing it, but really it's just the setup of the whole entire atmosphere of a building and classroom that's just positive. It lets everybody know what the expectations are out front. Here's your potential consequences, whether they be positive or negative based on your behavior choices. And so all that's laid out for these kids this coming year so they can see, hey, this is what you expect and I get to make the choice. If I do what I need to do, these are my positive consequences. If I don't make that good choice, here are the not so positive, the more negative consequences. But consistency is the key, and we are 
we are off and running with it with a lot of really good built-in repetitive rewards for those kiddos that are always doing the right thing and some like she said the mentoring and the small group for those kids who need a little more help making those choices and need some specific instruction in them. and those are fluid groups so if it looks like our anger management kids are really getting what they need and we're seeing a rise in some other behavior issues we're going to take that cue from the kiddos and develop a new group so those kids could be in this in anger management for just three or four weeks and be fine and be good to go and get the skills they need or they might need to be transferred into another group that's maybe more of a trauma aware type of thing so and we're using all kinds of things we're using behavior checklists for that persistence to graduation rates to check on that so there's a lot of different things that we're looking at to choose those kids that might need that help well, <laughs> the question is not what's wrong with you the question is what's happened to you absolutely Absolutely. And hopefully this year our teachers won't even have to ask that question so much as it's that's irrelevant at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever has happened to you, here's how we're going to treat you and here's how we're going to be here supporting you. So you're absolutely right. Yeah. No doubt in my mind we've got the best team to turn this school around in the state. <laughs> I tell you what, I would put this staff up against any school in the state. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. We want you to come back in December and Tell us how things are going. All right. <laughs> Even got me excited. I know. I'm <laughs> telling you. Uh, and it was you know, great. I was down in Hodgenville uh, Sunday night at this really nice restaurant. That, in Hodgenville. Yes. Hey, and uh, so, uh, would you go back and ask Bobby if he would drive a bus for us, please? <laughs> 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 all right thank you all uh construction updates jra and alliances first on all good news all good news it is all good news <laughs> they've moved a lot of dirt Even in east tarden i know soul, that huh? yes yes <laughs> Um, hopefully, uh, in your board pack tonight, you'll see a couple of field reports uh, that are generated by my office, uh, dated, I believe, Friday. So it's a fairly recent report. Um, and I won't sit here and, and go through it line by line and read it. Uh, there's lots of photographs and the reports for you to look at. Um, uh, start with Lincoln Trail. Um, the perimeter building foundations are just about completed. They probably since Friday, they have been completed. Uh, and that'll let us sort of segue into a lot of the interior foundations that are in the building. Uh, so that's that's remarkable progress uh, on it. Uh, the geothermal wells are going in. You'll see some photographs of the drill rig uh, on Lincoln Trail, uh, starting to drill those. Um, probably the most uh, impactful thing you'll see from the road um, is that they have put the DGA, the, the crushed stone for the parking lot out in front. Um, so you can kind of get a sense of the scale of the parking area how far the building will set back from, from Bardstown Road. Uh, but it also, it, it serves a lot of purposes. It gives us uh, an alliance, a, a nice big building pad, uh, to sort of have a lay down area for materials. The contractors can park there. Uh, it's pretty pretty versatile. Um, so that's a that's a major achievement right now. I know, I know Gerald's pretty, pretty proud of his, yeah, of his stone out there. Um, in addition to that, and, and again, we. We're at a stage in the construction where we cover up a lot of stuff with earth, but the, uh, the storm structures, the main lines on the site have actually been installed as well. And once we're paved out and put our yard inlets in, our curb inlets in, uh, those pipes are, are sitting there ready to go. And the other uh, small piece that uh, is also hard to see, but it's, it's happening, is all the underground electrical rough-in has actually started as well. So uh, those are all pretty, pretty significant milestones uh, for the project. Um, I suspect probably within the next 30 days there'll be concrete block starting on the job. Uh, so you actually start to see the project coming up out of the, out of the grade. Um, for East Middle School, um, you know, it's a bigger site, so we're still doing, um, and it's a little bit more complicated site in terms of the amount of earthwork that has to be done uh, with all the different topography. Uh, but we're making good progress on that uh, despite our, our, our weather. Um, there's a lot of cut that's been completed, um, and we're, we're moving earth from the borough area to the fill area on the site. Uh, but the biggest thing is that the building pad uh, has been completed. You'll we'll see, uh, and I know there's lots of activity, and people are driving by and looking at updates all the time, but uh, there's a big stone pad there where you can sort of tell now where mm -hmm. the building will sit proper on the site. 
Uh, so again, that's a, that's a big milestone for us as well. Uh, foundation work is actually scheduled to start next week, Monday. Monday. So uh, Wittenberg contractors will be there uh, starting that. So again, major milestone for that one. Uh, hopefully our weather will hold and we'll get caught up to Lincoln Trails foundations very, very quickly. Um, and, you know, simple things like the erosion controls uh, completed out at the east site uh, and even the, uh, the Doyle's trailer out there now has temporary power. So on a day like today, he has that. Soon he has some air conditioning. He does. He does. Yeah, so he, he timed that one beautifully. Um, in terms of a little housekeeping, we do have later on in your consent agenda tonight, we have a couple of change orders on both. Um, uh, both both sets, there's four on uh, East Harden and there's three on Lincoln Trail. Those all uh, have a summation of, of credits back to the board and a, a fairly sizable amount is, is at that. That's good news. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, and again, I won't belabor that, but uh, a, lo a little bit of it's housekeeping post bid to deal with some materials issues that we had post bid, <coughs> some labor adjustments. Uh, post bid as well so nothing really changes on the project proper it's the same building we haven't made any changes to the design of the building it's just a little financial cleanup uh, along one of those particular change orders yeah what he said <laughs> <laughs> um, i think you'll find that the change orders i, I think i think we should talk about them a little bit but, but we did find a, an overlap and then uh, since we have multiple packages, two packages happen to include the same thing and they were only one of them was supposed to. So that's where you're getting credit back from materials and labor and they're substantial. So that is worth, uh, that, that's, uh, I earned my salary for the month, I'll say. <laughs> the, uh, the other process we're talking about the drilling on Lincoln Trail, we've actually got two big rigs back there drilling. Of course, we've got over 200 drill wells to actually put in, but those are well in, in, uh, underway. Um, most of the activity in front of the building now is kind of coming down to a, uh, to a drawdown, uh, and they're starting to go <laughs> to the back side of the site. On the east, uh, east middle, we are we're tickled to death. You know, you talk about a phoenix rising from the ashes. This one has actually risen from the, <laughs> from the water. <laughs> So, so we managed to hit the weather at the right time. We got it, we got stoned down and we're ready to start digging. They've mobilized on that site. So now we're gonna start digging and putting concrete and still in the ground at east. Uh, kind of a funny thing, I guess, last progress meeting we had at Lincoln Trail, we still didn't have a trailer. We didn't have a job site trailer. So we had a couple of little 10 foot pop-up tents and we literally had a, a progress meeting on site. So Mr. Gum said he thought that was even a first for him. So <laughs> we, uh, we're getting there. We're starting to, to get to that place where we can kind of get the, not catch our breath, but kind of get our foot propped in the ground and get coming up like we need to. And you're gonna start seeing things happen from this point on. Uh, as a little sign of appreciation from, from both of us, our companies, I know you're always passing out awards and recognition and all that, and we've got some plaques that we wanted to pass to you, the two principals, and Mr. Stith over there. He's been a big asset for us, a big help, and we appreciate uh, working with him. But they're little plaques, and I'll bring them up here, and it just is a little thing of appreciation. It's about the groundbreakings for the two schools. Uh, we appreciate your confidence. We know we put your treasure in us, and we intend to deliver for you. And it's just a little simple uh, recognition. So other than that, uh, we're feeling good about where we are now. And uh, we're ready for the next 30 days. Thank you. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, who can get the two to the principals? Uh, Miss Jeffries is here. So she can come on up. Come on up, Miss Jeffries. Ms. Palmer, they weren't sure you were going to be here. Oh, so they gave you. <laughs> so I had yours. Nobody was sure I was going to be here. <laughs> so thank you for being here. Did you tell them we'd prefer money? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. No, that is very nice. Thank you very much.
There are two significant projects working out. I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had to bring hers. Appreciate it. If, uh, if you can work out a couple more good change orders and give us some savings, I won't guarantee you we'll get you one of those medallions right there. Oh. Okay? <laughs> Uh, on that note, Carl, I, I would like to point out, and Billy's a little too humble to mention it, but one of the differences between general contracting and construction management in this same scenario, more than likely the board would never have known about. Uh, right, that, that, that would have been in my coffers. <laughs> well, one, one good thing, when John's happy, most all of us are happy. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> he, right. he was not very happy for uh, several months earlier in his career here. So hopefully things turns out well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One Thank additional you. item that we, we do need to talk about at some point is uh, if the board remember we've kind of talked about about the outdoor classrooms fairly soon, you know, before the concrete guys uh, leave the site, we need to make a decision on whether or not we're going to move forward with either of those two alternates. They were alternates, if you remember, on the bid packages, and we kind of put them to the side. But fairly soon, probably by the August board meeting, we're going to need to make a decision. Okay. Board, would you all be interested in having the principals to discuss how those would be used or utilized? Mm -hmm. Is that something, maybe at the noon meeting in August, we could have them to present what that would be used for? Yeah, I'd like to hear what they mm -hmm. okay. think they might be useful for. Yep. You want to take it to CEO and all that? Yes, sir. Thank you all. All right. Uh, Mr. Billings, you got a report from EDG? <coughs> good evening. Thank you all for hearing me. Uh, I guess we'll go play good cop, bad cop tonight. Uh -oh. no, no. I have no gifts for you, so <laughs> you guess which one I am. <laughs> uh, I see. I stayed on a John Harden paving project. It is going well. Most all the prep work is done. Uh, the upper front parking lot is done in stripe. The student parking lot is done in stripe. And that all the prep work's done. Scotty's has assured me they will have two paving crews in there again tomorrow as they did today. So I would say hopefully in the next week they should be out of there. Uh, everything's going well with that project. Two holdups that we've had is when we peeled the rubber coating off the track surface, the existing asphalt was fairly well cracked, pretty good. So uh, that is one portion of the change order that we're asking for in your consistent center is to uh, more or less, the best way to explain it, it's a band-aid that you lay down over the cracks that are really wide to prevent those cracks from popping back through the asphalt surface overlay. We felt it was prudent to do it now because it's, it's, it's a much less expensive fix while it's exposed as to after we put the rubber coating back on it and then those cracks come back through then, it, then it's a much more serious condition to fix. The other thing that has come to our attention is the front parking lot where the buses are is uh, the existing drainage pattern. If you're walking into the pack, there's a long sidewalk there, and it drains across that parking lot from that sidewalk to a drainage structure right next to the new steps that were just put in last year. Uh, so that drainage pattern is very flat now. When we put the inch and a half surface overlay on it, we're at the sidewalk, we can't come up an inch and a half because we have to stay at the sidewalk grade. Where we're in the middle, we have to come up. And then again, we can't come up where the catch basin is. So we're going to create a hump in there and make the drainage pattern worse. It's basically, it's too flat in that area. So the remedy to that, we're proposing to put a concrete swell from that sidewalk over to that catch basin. It's six foot wide. It'll essentially look like a sidewalk in the parking lot, but the concrete allows the water to drain much better than the asphalt does. Plus the other benefit to that is 
is it gives a paving group something to pull to to hit a specific grade is instead of just trying to pay the grade in themselves. I don't know if you paid any attention. There's one of these concrete swells at the buildings and grounds facilities, and there's also one at the bus garage facilities. You probably haven't ever noticed it, but that's the uh, best solution we have to remedy the two situations. So unfortunately, my change order is not a credit, it's going the other way. I had news. Yeah, I do have about seven or eight other projects that are nearing completion that will be done on time and all work looks good. The best feelings is I understand when you all took up the rubber, you didn't have to do a different process, which turned out to be cheaper as well. Is we, that did get, we did get a little bit of a credit but we did get a credit back from the contractor when he built the plans originally called to mill the rubber off of the off the track he was able to just peel that off with a greater blade so we did get some credit from from the contractor because the extent of his work was much less than what was anticipated is that same contractor that done central's track pardon me the Contractor doing the track. Is it the same one that done Central's track? The the rubber coating on the track is not a part of this package. Okay. So uh, it, it's the same it. company that did North. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Mr. Stiss kind of headed up the rubber coating. It'll come later this fall. I think the I've talked with the contractor. It's typically when you put the new asphalt down, you, you need to let that asphalt cure out about 30 days before the rubber coating comes down. Is it just the one change order? Yes, it, it's one change order, but there's two items in it. It includes order. everything. Yes, yes. ma'am. Okay. Mm, that's not too bad. Yeah. Yes. That's all I have, unless you want me to go into further detail on the little project. Uh, Mr. Billings, I do want, I know Mr. Wise was interested in this as well. We changed the way we strike the parking lots. How many extra parking spots do we have at Central as a result of that for cars? Do you recall? Oh, wow. 40, 50. A bunch. Yeah. Wow. It was really wasted space for sporting events and mm -hmm. things. So, yeah, that's good. Yeah, it worked out good. I mean, fortunately, there's enough asphalt out there and long stretches of it that we could redesign the striking configuration to make that work and, and, that, and obviously for your events that especially at the high schools for basketball games and stuff that probably doesn't work out real well appreciate that that's good yeah. okay thank you all very thank much <coughs> Okay, consent agenda. Anything anyone wants to pull out, talk about, or delete, add? Uh, I think we've already talked about seven and eight in the construction updates. We've got uh, number nine is approval of a bus driver recruitment incentive program so uh, would I get that $500 if Bobby comes and drives a bus yes sir yeah. all right no. <laughs> but only but, if he stays for the year oh no <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid the kids will run him off <laughs> yeah we're uh, we, we do need some bus drivers and uh, I think uh, we still have a few uh, teaching positions to fill and but uh, like everyone else there's uh, more work than we have workers anymore seems like so uh, uh, that's not a bad thing but it's not necessarily a good thing it means that everybody that wants a job is working that's good <laughs> anyone have anything they want pull delete or anything if not we need a motion to approve I'll make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda.
Everyone okay? All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And action items. Okay. Yes, we don't have anything under action items. Anyone got any new business? I guess uh, July, school will be in session by next time we meet. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, <laughs> it seems like it's been a short summer. But we're looking forward to getting back and seeing the, the turnout of students. We think we're going to be maybe a hundred or so short by number so far. Yes. Of last year's enrollment. Compared to last year, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Is that on track with projections, though? Yes, we will have open enrollment in, uh, next week, uh, if I have my dates correct. Is that right, Mr. Bauer, the following 20, week? 25th and 26th. 20, July 25th and 26th, and that will give us more of an idea. At this point, we have students who have let the principals know they are withdrawing, but they haven't gone and enrolled at their new school as of yet. Okay, superintendent's report. Yes, sir. Uh, tell us about your week vacation and all this good stuff. <laughs> yes, there's a big difference between a yellow flag on a beach and a I, double I, red I, flag I, within I, a 24-hour period. That so. must have been exciting. <laughs> it is. Uh, light traffic leaving, though. That's all right. Uh, just want to uh, really thank our teachers who worked summer school this year at all of our different sites, um, at our high schools for credit recovery, and at our elementary school, we had four weeks of reading camp for uh, kindergartners going to first and first, second, and third graders, and had a couple hundred students come out to that uh, pretty consistently during the weeks. They had a lot of fun, but a lot of hard work went into preparing for that. Uh, Mr. Sutton is at KASA. They had a presentation they were doing up there uh, today, so that's where he's at. But uh, had a lot of great teachers and site leaders working on that and had uh, a lot of success with that. We'll be looking at the data to make sure. Uh, we may not see huge gains from that, but we really hope to not have summer slide. And if you saw from the commissioner, he talked about uh, alleviating that summer slide, so we are really hoping that we did that. Um, just want you to know Mr. Bauer has uh, been working. We had our two-day retreat with our principals and assistant principals and administrators. He had uh, gone for a visit to Marshall County High School uh, and was able to talk with Trent, the su uh, superintendent down in that district, and came back and gave each pre principal a re ready-made packet for them to go through a crisis prevention plan and intervention plan and if the unthinkable happens trying to learn from those who have been through it in a very realistic way so he presented that to the principals and they just uh, really appreciated the hard work and dedication that went into that and his department maybe has hired a few people this summer and processing uh, it is just amazing to see the amount of work that goes in um, and I will share uh, another thing we did yesterday is we had new principal training and we have developed a handbook for new principals we didn't go over the 75 page packet we just did what they needed to know uh, to survive the first day of school uh, I mentioned our goal the first day is to get them in safely get them home to the right address Mr. Stith mentioned something about making sure they were able to eat lunch during the day. That's important as well. So, And then, of course, uh, Mr. Stith, along with the, um, the sites, and Mr. Wise and I get pictures on pretty regularly of the Lincoln Trail in East Harden. But also, if you have a chance to go and look at our buildings, uh, they have gone out to peruse the buildings uh, to make sure all the outsides are looking really nice. Uh, Mr. Stucker and his group are working really hard on the inside of the buildings um, with the different projects we have going on in the district. So I know a lot of people think summertime is a relaxing time. It is not. It is a very busy time for everybody in the school district. So we just really appreciate their hard work and dedication to make those things happen. We will have um, online registration for people who are already in the school district. You will be able to go on to the Infinite Campus Parent Portal and register your children or make sure everything in the computer is correct. 
Uh, Mr. Lewis shared yesterday that about two-thirds of the paperwork has been eliminated through this online process. Uh, One-third of it isn't because we <coughs> wouldn't like to go paperless with it, but there are some requirements that you have paper copies of some items. So uh, we weren't able to do that, but for two-thirds of it. So they've really worked hard on that. So we will be doing a one-call, and parents can find that step-by-step -step directions uh, on our website of how to do that. Miss um, Clark yesterday mentioned that it would be really nice to have step-by-step -step directions. So we may get with Mr. Tab tonight to ask not only for step-by-step -step directions, but little screenshots of where you go with really nice arrows. So uh, don't escape. <laughs> so again, great appreciation for all the hard work that's happening this summer in the district. And with that, Chairman, that is it. Okay, thank you. Uh, we don't need an executive session no, tonight. And uh, board calendar is back to school August the 5th, opening day for staff, and everything else will fall in place. Yes, sir. First day for students, August 8th, and elementary schools, with the exception of Lakewood, will release one hour early. Uh, just to give the extra time and consideration to make sure those students get home safely and then our buses can get to the middle schools and high schools on time. Andrea is still with us and we think she couldn't get all her stuff in the truck so I think she needs to just stay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Are you going to be here next month? Need a motion to adjourn, I guess, unless... Don't well, I think we need to say what a great job she's done on the school board. She has. She, has. <laughs> she involved herself immediately and learned all she needed to learn, and you've she, done a great job. She's a great Thank teacher, you. too, for the for the new board member. <laughs> 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 yes. We're going to miss you a bunch. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, done a great I will, job. I will miss Hardin County tremendously. Yes. Well, then come back. Yeah, don't leave. Don't. I probably will. <laughs> okay. yeah. This is still home, right? That's right. Home You'll know when I'm back then. Don't worry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> home is where you hang your hat. You can change it anytime. <laughs> it's where the kids and dogs are. Uh, all right. Let's go home. Yep. Motion, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Motion to adjourn. Signify by saying aye. 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 Post. Motion carried. Thank everyone for being here and have a safe trip home. <laughs>